Hey folks, it's Chad here again with Airstream of Greensboro. It's a beautiful day here in North Carolina. The wind is blowing in the right direction for my hair. The sun is out. It is a nice day. And behind me, I have the all new 2024 International 23 front bed with the twin bed option. And we are gonna jump into a walk around and see all of the improvements for 2024. We're gonna see the outside, the inside. We're gonna check out the top. We're gonna look at the bottom. So let's get started with a walk around now. All right, so we are going to jump to the walk around of the inside. I'm going to show you all the improvements on the inside. And I've started doing the inside walk first here lately because I know for a lot of you guys, you're just out here wanting to see the inside of what this Airstream looks like because let's be real, the outside of Airstreams, well, they've not changed for 90 plus years for the most part. So there's not been a big improvement on them. We've had the same front cap for the most part now. You are going to see a different roof line starting with the 2024 model year on the International. We'll talk about that in a little bit uh, when we're on the outside. But let's go to the inside of the International 23 front bed model. Now, I talk a lot with Airstreams when I'm doing kind of these walkthroughs. I talk about the door a lot. And the reason I do that, for one, I don't know who has or has not seen a video of mine yet so that's part of why i do it but two it really shows uh the craftsmanship for airstream when we can talk about the door it um, roughly eight hours for them to craft this door by hand at the factory there in jackson center ohio where the factory is we do have a new um latching system for the screen door this year it looks very similar to um last year to an extent um it's just it's a little bit so more solid i would say you know pl it's still plastic this is one of those things i'd like to see airstream move to metal it'd be cool to see a piece of aluminum right here um, this screen door here it's going to be fitted to fit this door that is built so these are kind of built together and they fit these two pieces together and you're going to have eight welds on the outside and that is extruded aluminum there so it's solid aluminum like we would expect you're going to see just tremendous detail with the welds. I always like to point out the welds when I'm showing an Airstream or doing a video because they're, they're so consistent. You know, you would think you would see some variation and that would be where you would see it, but you really don't. So you're gonna have a handle this lock here and you can lock yourself out with this one. So you wanna make sure that as you're getting out, if you're not planning to lock this door to make sure it's, it's actually all the way back, then this is gonna be a deadbolt like true little little tiny little deadbolt right there so that can only you know you can you can't lock this from the inside and shut the door you've got to lock this with the key on the outside but you can lock this top one here uh, if you're not careful and actually lock yourself out of the camper that has happened a few times and then there's a little latch right here that you're going to want to push back that holds this door shut big thing to remember never leave keys in the keyholes here because it will put a massive dent in the side of your airstream and that would be a very sad day for whoever is the owner of that particular camper i also love the cast aluminum hinges they're just massive and you know airstream likes to call this the vault door of the rv industry and i think they absolutely have the right to call it that because these things just slam with that sound of quality i love that and there's a good thud to it uh, as we step into, oh yeah, there's a little shield that comes across. This Airstream logo here has a tendency to fall out, so make sure you've got yours before you take off with your Airstream for the first time. Uh, and then add a, a better piece of double-sided <laughs> sticky tape to it because it does seem to come off. I don't know if it's the heat that maybe it causes that to come off sometimes, but uh, that does happen. And then these screen covers, I like this, great for pets. Um, because you got the screen behind it that's going to help protect that screen from pets allow them to fill the cold air now as we step into this camper i'm going to pull the door closed because it is warm out you're going to have your awning controls remember the international it's going to be a powered awning there's a new spring this year we'll talk about that in a second now you have the ability to tilt this forward and backwards and then open and close one uh, pro trip tip to leave that power button on the whole time the awning is out it helps the little computer understand what's going on. 
and then right here we're gonna have the battery disconnect now this is a re remote solenoid so when you cut this off you actually hear something click behind you and that is the solenoid we're gonna have our awning lights our ceiling lights both are dimmable and then we'll have some other switches which include some of your outside lights inside lights right here as well and then we're gonna have the standard regulated fire extinguisher right there to the right And then stepping inside, one of the, th the ways that Airstream describes the International is kind of a light, airy beach feel. And I really think you can see that. You're going to have these cool breeze colors with this dark kind of wood nature feel with the floor. It is a beautiful interior if, it is, if it's what you want. Now, this is in the aqua colors. There are two color options, and I'll pop those up on the screen so you can see those. And really all this changing, when you're picking the two color options, is going to be the cushion co uh, cover here. That's going to be a different color. It's a seashell or aqua. Everything else is going to be the same. So your cabinet colors, your accordion countertop, your keb uh, lower cabinet colors, you got a different color up there from down here. That's all going to be the same. It's the same floor. So if, if you're not a fan of this floor, you're going to have to make a, a sacrifice there and be okay with that floor to get everything else that you're wanting to get. Now, the 23 foot flying cloud is one of quite a few options that you have with the International. Uh, there, the International ranges basically from 23 foot all the way up to 30 foot and kind of everything in between. Um, it's going to mirror the flying cloud to an extent but the flying cloud does have more floor plan options than the international so we'll start up here kind of towards the front we're going to have our little marker board that you can write notes the day's agenda we've got some key holders right there or jacket holders whatever you'd like to use those for of course your switch is there now you're going to have a unique design on the international with the the bench here so that's basically covering the wheel well for that size remember we got the tandem axle on that side axle and then underneath the dinette we have these little storage areas that are made made out of aluminum they look really cool um but i do think by doing this design so this is definitely a design choice from airstream you're losing a little bit of storage capability because we've got this you know aluminum looking design here in the in the seat itself and then the drawer is kind of above so that that's that's unique to the international you'll see that with a lot of the different floor plans and the um the dinette or the bench seating depending on the particular floor plan and like i said that's just part of the international design and it looks really cool and i think that's what they're going for is that cool look but you're also sacrificing a little bit of storage with that as well now the 23 foot flying cloud is the same floor plan as the 23 foot international that we're currently in everything's the same what's going to be different is going to be your touch and finishes so your colors your tabletops the Corian countertop all of the hardware all of that's what's going to be elevated to make this feel a little bit nicer you're going to have a different port window here on the international versus the flying cloud all of these things elevate the airstream just a little bit to get you to that next level and of course you're going to have that powered awning on the outside now for your kitchen area you're going to have a well-appointed kitchen and this floor plan is easy to tow it is a you know 500 pound tongue weight you can tow this with about any truck out there and a lot of your suvs would be able to tow this and that's one of the things that makes this a popular floor plan you got your cereal box storage right there but it's also a small floor plan and that was my point of, of mentioning that this is a floor plan as your pack that you get with every airstream um, this is a floor plan that's really two people maybe two folks and then you bring uh, your grandkid along to sleep here in the dinette and i'll show what that looks like in a little bit and then you've got this one's got the twin bed as i mentioned you can do a queen a queen bed so it is a smaller camper, but let's be real, when you go camping, we want to be outside. We're not necessarily sitting in the camper, and that's what this is perfect for. It's going to be easy to tow. It's going to be easy to park. Um, 
and you'll be outside doing your journey. So in the kitchen area, we're gonna have the undermounted stainless steel sink as opposed to the, uh, what do they call that? <laughs> Flush mounted stainless steel sink? I can't remember. Man, my brain goes blank sometimes, I tell you. Now, a really nice residential faucet that does have the pull down so you can rinse out your pots and pans and dishes and things. Love the port windows that Airstream always tries to put behind the sink area. We're also gonna have our charge controller for the solar, solar charge controller here is this MPPT, it's a Victron Energy. Now this has the solar option. So there's 300 watts of solar on top, it's three, three 100 watt panels. I'll show those to you in a little bit. Now they are capable of producing 300 watts. They're actually currently producing 227, 230 watts of power. Now this doesn't have any batteries on it. This one does not have the uh, lithium option. If you chose to put lithium batteries in, which you could do, um, this would be charging those batteries. And then new for 2024, we're gonna have a Progressive Dynamics 2000 watt inverter. Now my understanding is this is still only powering the circuits that are labeled inverter. So for instance, the circuit that is above right there and it's labeled inverted circuit, um, it's not powering the microwave. I would think with 2000 watts, they would be able to power the microwave. I mean, they do that on the range line. So I'm not sure why they why Airstream chose not to put the microwave on that same circuit that the inverter is on, but that is that is the case. They have not told us different, and I haven't figured out whether that's different or not. Um, that just seems to be the way it is. Now underneath this really nice cabinet, you're going to have some good storage. Oh, so we've got our trash can. Every Airstream does come with a trash can. Then we've got a little bit of storage there. We've got some nice pullouts. This first one, we're going to find our silverware organizer and then under that's just going to be another little drawer here you know not super super deep but it is somewhere you can put some things and of course i showed the pantry a second ago but you have a really nice pantry with the 23 foot model and you may think like that's not a lot of storage well the 28 foot rear bed doesn't even have a pantry so that's pretty good now this one has the convection microwave option now, if you didn't do the convection microwave option you'd have a, a oven here as opposed to the microwave the convection microwave it has been really popular uh, most of our floor plans if it's a stock unit we're going to have this so it's a regular microwave it's a convection oven you can also use it to air fry and i think you can even make beef jerky with it if you would like above that is going to be your three burner stovetop it's a fairy on stovetop it does have the cool lights if you want those to be on and then you do want to make sure that this cools down before you close uh, this glass top because it can cause that to crack and then with that glass top down you have a fairly nice flush um, table or countertop here to be able to store things now my coffee maker would go right there because that's about the only spot for one to go now we do have a vent over the oven area the stovetop the vents to the outside we also have a nice led light to help illuminate that area and then we have that storage that is above the dinette or the kitchen area now right kind of continuing down we're going to have our refrigerator this is a 12 volt refrigerator this uh, happens to be the same refrigerator that we see on the touring coach line and uh, i haven't had an opportunity to ask airstream why they chose a different refrigerator for the 23 foot versus uh, well everything else but the 23 foot's both the flying cloud and the international get this style fridge um, and then everything else is getting a different norcole 12 volt fridge that you know it looks more like a the the other one looks more like a um dorm fridge now you would think there's a lot of storage up here there's not it's kind of just a little place you maybe put a blanket there but they did want to give you the option of be, to be able to store something there now this isn't norcole this is nova cool is the brand for that and then as we continue down a little bit more we're going to get to one of your two uh, wardrobes now we got some storage up here it is illuminated with a light and then of course your wardrobe hanging closet there and this is a really nice deep closet you can see i've got a box tucked back there in the corner and i'm still not using near any of that space and remember this is an airstream so it's going to be solid wood everywhere so that is a 
big thing that makes Airstream unique is that they use that light Italian plywood with the laminate over top. Really everywhere, even like here, that's still gonna be, it's a thin piece of plywood, but it's still solid plywood even there. So you could hang a picture easily right there. Unlike a lot of your other manufacturers that would use kind of a little piece of basically cardboard is what it feels like sometimes. Now there's a little storage area right here in this little nook. And then we are gonna have the dinette. Now this is to me potentially one of the downfalls of this floor plan. Let me see if I can get my camera in a good position to show. Yeah, look at that, there we go. Okay. So to me, this could be one of the downfalls to this floor plan. Now, this past year, I sold quite a few um, of the 23 foot International and Flying Clowns. Um, they were very popular. One thing I'd like to see here is a rounded countertop, kind of like the, the uh, base camp. But in the event you're like myself and we, you know, I'm the average American with a little bit of, a little bit of extra weight on, I probably should get on Jenny Craig. Um, I can push this table out. There's a lock, little sliding lock down here. So I can unlock this and I can slide the table out, which then would allow me to be able to sit here and you know play cards, have dinner, what have you. Now the only TV on this floor plan is gonna be back here in the bedroom area. And it does pull out and you can swing that around. So if you wanted to, you could sit here at night and watch TV. And this is actually fairly comfortable to me. The other thing you could do is put this down, which I'm gonna do now and make it into kind of a chaise lounge. So the way we would do that, we're gonna pull these pillows off for now. <clears throat> there and then I like to when I'm doing this go ahead and pull these up you can kind of force this into place if you want to but I feel like you're really taking a chance of uh, potentially scarring or cutting up the ultra leather and it's, it's not leather this is ultra leather and then on this massively over engineered um, leg for the table you're gonna unlatch both of these it is spring loaded so that's something you're gonna want to pay attention to when you're undoing these because that when you undo them to raise the table back up it can have the tendency to try to jump back up on you and then just kind of slowly push that down until it touches and then we'll lock those back in place and now we can put now these cushions have a uh, kind of diagonal curve to them so they fit into this uh these sides fairly well they fit that curvature and then one thing I found, and I kind of messed around with this a little bit, is that um, you need to pull this cushion out to here. And then your smaller cushions uh, that kind of fit back to make that back area, you'll use these to fill in this space here. And right here. And that gives you kind of your full bed area that you can have here. I think it's 76 inches deep or across. Um, you can check the link. I got a link below that will have uh, all of the specifications in it. Now, where this can be kind of a chaise lounge is putting these two cushions back here, like so. And then from here, you can lay down like this and recline and relax a little bit. Have your partner here in this area, maybe leaning up against this. And this can become your chaise lounge. Now, as far as the bed goes, we wouldn't leave these cushions here. They would go below. And, and you have at least a nine, five foot nine person can sleep here. Maybe five foot ten. I mean, five foot ten, I have shoes on. So, I mean, this is long enough for an adult to lay here for sure. Now, is it the most comfortable? No. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. It's a, it's a dinette that we're turning into a bed and using cushions to kind of fill in all of the holes. Now, if you have figured out a better way to lay out the this dinette, leave that in the comments because I would love to know that. Let me put this back together and we'll continue the walk around. 
put these down, lift these up. Voila, the dinette is back. So that is the dinette for the 23 front bed model. But then that's, you know, Flying Cloud, whether it's Flying Cloud or International, it's going to be fairly similar. The Flying Cloud is going to be a little bit different. They just use a different setup right here uh, versus the, um, the International. Now we can move towards the back, and in the back, we're going to have. My one of my favorite layouts is the twin bed model. Now I made a video on the twin bed versus queen bed. I'll link that. I guess this side I think. Uh, so you can take a look at that. Now that's based mainly on the 25 foot flying cloud, but it is going to give you a good idea of what it's going to feel like even on the 23. On the 23, if you go with the queen bed, it's going to be a east to west queen bed. Not a north south. To get the north south queen bed with enough room around each side, you're going to have to go to a 27 foot. I love the twin bed model on the 23 foot. The twin bed model on the 23 foot makes this floor plan to me make sense because I can walk right into the bedroom and it, you know if I'm changing, I can shut this curtain across and get ready. If I want to have two kind of sitting areas because I'm entertaining and I you know, I want to have a couple back here talking and some folks around the dinette talking, we can do this. This whole space can be uh, entertainment. But the biggest thing is at night when I need to get up and go to the restroom, I can be laying down. Let's see, I'll be on this side. I can be laying down at night and enjoying, you know, having a good, a good sleep. And if I need to go to the restroom, which let's be real, we all do that as we get older, I can easily jump up and walk out to the bed. Now, if you are to the bed, to the bathroom. Now, if you are the one that sleeps on the outside of the bed, you know, it's not going to be a big problem to be able to um, jump up at night and uh, go to the restroom. But if you're the one that's laying across this side of the bed, up against that front window, you're going to have to shimmy down to the end, jump off the bed here, walk around, and then go out to the bathroom and then do the reverse as you come back. So something to think about when you're checking out the 23-foot uh, Flying Cloud or International, but I really feel like the twin bed just makes this floor plan make so much more sense. So we're going to have really nice twin beds on each side. Um, now this is an 8-foot floor plan, so 8-foot across. So your aisle down here is going to be a little bit skinnier compared to um, the bigger floor plans as you go to twin beds and say the 25, you know, 27. So even your your little nightstand is going to be slightly smaller just because there's a, you know almost a, what five and five inches, five and a half inches difference. So but a really nice area here in the middle. We have power right there in the back, so you have a spot to put a, any equipment that you might need at night. And then on both sides, we're going to have that new. USB type A and type C connection and it should have that on this side as well. Now I am not a pillows guy. Um, I would leave this to my wife to do but I feel like I did a pretty good job with the pillows right. I don't, I'm not even sure if they're all supposed to be on the bed but that's where I thought they would go. So you tell me in the comments if you like where I put the pillows uh, for this review. Now above that area we're going to have another storage area you can never have too much storage when you're RVing right there. And there's a new LED light for 24. It's going to be one single LED light. And then there's a nice little switch right there. We've got our speakers for our radio right there. Now, if you are wondering which windows open, 
the center window opens you do need to open that solar guard first and then you can open that window this top window here above the port opens and then on this side we have our emergency egress window and that window will also open when you're not needing to use it for emergency egress now we have another inverted circuit right there we're going to have our hdmi input we'll have our power and cable coming to this tv right there so the cable input there and then this is a 12 volt tv so there's the 12 volt wiring there are some extra hdmi inputs here if you want to add something to the back of the tv and then as i mentioned this is the one that will swivel out let's see and it comes all the way let me move out here remember i do this with one hand recording so it can come all the way out so you are able to re to view that new 12 volt smart tv for 2024 from inside the dinette area you can sit on this side and work and maybe use that as a second monitor or just to have the new zone whatever it might be if you're wondering what brand it is that brand there it is 12 volt 24 inch smart tv uh, ultra slim with the web os hub ooh, ooh. um that's everything there now one thing i haven't mentioned on the inside yet is up here so there is a new radio in the international um i like the other radio better that's really what i can say there it's bluetooth am fm all that kind of stuff um you know it works the sound quality doesn't appear to be as good to me i felt like the jl audio sounded much better uh, i also like JL, jl audio so maybe i'm just a little biased in that sense but uh but that's the new radio that they are including now it didn't come with the cover that i can find you know the jl audio had a nice cover that went over it for when you weren't using it now up in here we're gonna find a couple of new things so a big thing is going to be this data port. If you are looking to use uh, Starlink, you are able to use Starlink with this data port. Now, it's not super easy to do this right now. Uh, I, I've heard rumors that Starlink is going to come out with a uh, you know, Cat5 RJ45 connector uh, adapter or something along those lines. But the cable itself that they use isn't proprietary. It's just a data cable. The ends that they put on the Starlink cable, that's what's proprietary. You can actually cut that cable in half, put an RJ45 on one side, RJ45 on the other side, and then connect it right here. As long as you wire those exactly the same on both sides, so you use a standard uh, and, and wire them the same, you'll be able to use this to get, to get your Starlink inside um, from the outside. I don't have a Starlink myself, so I'm not able to um, demonstrate that for you. And then we're going to have that HDMI input right there. And we do have USB right here. Now they move the power on and off for the um, coax antenna, the HD antenna to here. And there's a little switch right there to turn that on and off. It used to be beside one of the TVs. Um, for some reason they moved up here, I guess to make it a little bit easier. And then we do have another inverted circuit there that I showed you earlier. So data port is right there for Starlink or any other type of connection that just uses data. And it's a CAT6 cable, it's a CAT6 connector, and then we have HDMI, USB right there. Now, in 2023, if you remember, they got rid of the DVD player, so of course that is still not there. It was still available in 22, but not uh, 23 going forward. No DVD player, but you can add whatever you would like to right there. I think on this setup, I would try the new smart TV and uh, just see how that worked, because it does have Netflix and YouTube prime video it probably has everything else as well i haven't been able to mess too much with that yet but then you also have quite a few extra uh, hdmi inputs off the back of the tv and power right there so you could easily mount you know apple tv right here using a you know an adapter or something like that or a fire stick whatever fancies your desire and then there are uh, three coat hangers i missed right there now, one of the big changes with the 2024 model year, and I made a whole separate video about this, is going to be the new GE AC, which is currently running. It's been running the whole time we've been inside. There's one more wardrobe right here that also has a light. That cable needs to be, oh, it's like the sticker. I guess they had it sticking like that. I don't know. We'll have to address that. Uh, it does have a light there, and then... Uh, second wardrobe here so i'm guessing this is the his wardrobe 
and the hers wardrobe or hers and hers or his and his however you need to lay out the wardrobe um you can do that but you'd have two wardrobes in the twin bed and the queen bed there's a in the queen bed there's a wardrobe right there too as well if i remember correctly so geac now right below that before i get to the ge there's a, like the little cubby back here i don't know if that's new for 24 but i don't remember it in 23 so back to the GE, I know I'm ADD, okay? I apologize. And I just wanna make sure I show you everything. Um, so the new GE AC, that also means you're getting a new intake for the AC. This has a Merv 8 filter uh, under it, I should say. Just a couple of screws, this will come off. You're able to clean that filter. I'm assuming you can probably repla replace that filter at some point as well. It's probably a basic filter uh, fabric. I, I doubt there's anything super you know, special, but it is nice that you can easily just pop these screws off and actually clean that. You had to completely modify the old quiet stream system to be able to clean it. So that, that's new for 2024. You're gonna see that from the classic all the way down to the Flying Cloud, the um, International and the, not International, sorry, the Caravel and the Bambi still have the old AC system and it'll be Dematic and not GE. Now on this, let's see, let me get, we got windows causing glare, there we go. All right, so I really like this, the GE controller. It seems to be very simple. There's kind of an e-paper design. Oh, let me get, there we go. E-paper design to it, as far as the screen goes. You can go low, high, or auto for the fan. As far as the modes go, you've got cool, and then we've got heat pump, we've got heat pump and furnace furnace by itself or off of course i'm going to turn the ac back on with the fan auto you can set the temperature here and it does tell you when you're selecting temp right there so selecting temp and then there isn't a separate button for calling up the inside temp what you basically just do is wait for a little bit and then it will start to show you the inside temp uh, temperature now it's it's in the probably 90s right now outside i just turned this ac on at around 11 o'clock it has cooled it down from somewhere around 90 degrees down to 77 degrees. Um, and probably about a two hour period, it got it to 77. And I feel like it will continue to bring the temperature down as well. Um, it seems to work very well. Now in the 23 foot, it's gonna be a 13.5 AC. I like air conditioning, so I wish they would just put a 15,000 BTU there. I'm sure it saves a little bit of money by going with the 13.5 and that's probably why they did the 13.5. It is adequate, as you can see, it is cooling this camper down and uh, it's doing it in the middle of the day with a very intense hot sun outside. So it's working great. And there's something else that I forgot to mention in the bedroom area is the storage that we have under the bed. So you're basically splitting this storage under these beds with some outside storage and some inside storage and a little bit more right there. And of course, we're gonna have a little bit of a container that comes out. And close that. And then right on the other side, we'll have another little storage area and a little container that pulls out as well. And in front of there, another storage area with a container that can pull out. So even on a 23 foot, uh, travel trailer, we have a ton of storage. So the last thing for me to talk about in this area is gonna be the new uh, solar controller and um, charge controller. So now this has the auto detect in it. It's also gonna be set as far as the solar controller goes and the charge profiles is going to be set to the Battleborn lithium batteries by default. Now, before, it was not. So you had to make sure that the technician made that switch for you, because if they didn't, then it wouldn't charge your batteries correctly. But it is now set automatically to uh, the lithium batteries. I do have one customer who has already gotten their 2024, and theirs was set to lead acid. So if you're having issues with your, your lithium batteries charging and not charging correctly, um, you're gonna wanna check and make sure this is set to lithium like it's supposed to be, as well as your solar charge controller, which is right there. Um, 
but from the factory it's supposed to be set to the lithium profile that also means that if you decide um, I like that they label everything fuses breakers also labeled um, if you decide not to put lithium in and you go with um, you know lead acid or AGM batteries then you're going to want to make sure that the technician during your PDI does change the control pro or the charge profiles for both the charge controller converter that's in the power box and the solar controller um, to the whatever profile it needs to be lead acid or AGM or, or lithium, you know, whatever it might be. I'm not a technician, so I don't know uh, what those profiles are, or what they're supposed to be. I just know they have to be changed to fit those charge profiles. Right. All right. Bathroom. Bathroom time. For a small unit, this is already a long video. <laughs> so the bathroom area is well appointed. It's one of my favorite bathrooms that Airstream has because it is all in one as opposed to the split bath. Now the split bath does give you the ability to have panoramic, panoramic windows, both the front and back. And that's part of why we see the split bath so often. Porcelain commode right there. We're gonna have a nice storage area right here. And a little bit more storage behind. There's a little storage spot there. I'm not sure what you would put there. You've got your toilet paper holder right there that is in a prime position for toilet paper. Now, as far as your seating position, plenty of room in this particular floor plane, the 23 foot. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a ton of room. I like where the toilet paper is. It's easy to get to. The only negative to this particular commode, I think the black tank is right below us. So this commode is sitting up a little bit. So if you're on the short side, your feet might dangle as you go to the potty. Now, right beside us, we're going to have the controls for the hot water heater. It is an on-demand hot water heater. Um, you'll set this temperature to the temp that you want to take a shower and then just turn the shower on. And then we're going to have our C-Level 2 tank monitors. Now on the battery side, this is, if you have lithium batteries, it's always going to show you a full battery until the point there's just no battery left. So you want to have something like a smart stunt installed. If it comes to the factory of lithium, it should have the smart stunt. And if we do it here at the store, we here at Airstream of Greensboro install a smart stunt as well as the battery uh, heater cable switch as well. And then you've got your fresh gray black water pump is right there. If you're dry camping, you're not going to get water uh, if you don't have the water pump on. Then we have a really nice surface mounted, which is what I could not remember how to say earlier, but surface mounted stainless steel sink here in the bathroom, a nice residential style faucet, nice little spot for a, a hand towel. And then you have a mirror that pulls out to be able to you know, see yourself in the morning. They could put a mirror right there, it would be nice. They could put a mirror right here, which would be nice. Um, but, you know, they don't do that. I do like the window so you can get some good sun. I mean, like sun, some good natural light. Of course, this window does open. It also has a pull down shade. Of course, you have two spots for this one, a little bit lower on this window, and then you can go all the way right there. Completely block that out. And then all of your windows are going to have a pull down shade as well. And then moving back to the bathroom, we are going to take a look at the shower. Now, this shower doesn't have a vent like a lot of the other split bath showers. The door is open at the top here and we have a fantastic fan just outside so you can turn that on and it will pull a lot of your steam out of the shower area. Now this is to me also one of the larger Airstream showers outside of probably the 33 foot classic. That bathroom is humongous. Now stepping into the showers I always try to do to give you an idea of the size and spacing that we have in here. Like I said, this shower is going to be plenty big and it looks like this has already broke. So we'll need to replace this before the next owner takes it. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Yeah, Airstream, you know, they are built very well, but they have their, their little issues as well, just like everybody else to an extent, to an extent. It is an Airstream. They are significantly built better than most of your other brands out there. Uh, I like the style shower controls here there's nice spot for soap of course we have the removable head uh, spray head thing right there and we can adjust that as well it does have an on off switch 
which is very nice, especially if you're dry camping. There is just a lot of space in here. I don't feel cramped at all. Plus, there's also this seat and you are able to sit down if you'd like to, if you're really tall. The only thing I'll say about this particular shower is this door is a little skinny from there. So I definitely have to turn sideways to fit through that door. That's the only thing I noticed about this shower that kind of sticks out to me compared to the other split bath showers that we see with Airstream. I think I have covered everything in a somewhat ADD manner on the inside of this coach. If I missed anything, let me know. And if I did miss something, I apologize, but let's jump to the outside now. All right, so let's start the outside walk of the International 23 FB twin bed. Now it is an Airstream and I joke about how, well, they all look the same, right? To an extent, I mean, they, they have their own characteristics, um, but you know, Airstreams have been Airstream for a lot, very long time and that's what makes them iconic. Now, not much has changed on the outside. I am going to show you what has changed, but we still have the stainless rock guards. That's a sacrificial cover there. Uh, much easier to replace this if you get a rock or something that comes up and hits this and dents it as opposed to having to try to replace um, this aluminum that's behind it. Now it is on a piano hinge on that side. We can open this up around to be able to clean behind it. Same thing with your solar guards. This is also a sacrificial plexiglass polymer. It's very strong, but if it cracks and that can happen, you get a little rock chip that's much easier to replace than to actually replace that window that is riveted onto the camper. And uh, a couple of screws on that side, it is hinged on this side and we can open that one to this side open that one to that side on the other side. Now the one here in the middle, it opens up in the middle and there's a couple of little screws that will lock the lock that open and hold it open so you can open that inside window. Now the twin bed model is gonna give you the most outside storage. Uh, you'll have some storage here, you have some storage on the front and on the other side. If you opt for the queen bed model, you're only gonna have storage on this side. Now it will be a larger interior storage area that's you know outside storage, but you know inside and be a little bit larger than what you see here. But if you're looking for the most amount of outside storage on an Airstream, it's going to be the twin bed model. Now let's check out this side. So I've got the power cable there. I'm using a power cable that we have here on site um, for powering this particular unit. But that's a power cable that comes with it. So a little bit of storage right there, and then. The front here, turn that and out, turn, and then we're going to see the largest portion of storage. It does have a light there uh, to be able to light that up right there. So good storage right there. And then we're going to have one more storage compartment over here. And then this one goes up pretty far. I mean, all, almost all the way to the front there, it seems like. And it goes back a little bit right there. <coughs> now we'll have two 30 pound propane tanks under here. Now this top lid just pops off and we'll find our two propane tanks right there. There is an auto switchover valve right there. And you can turn both of them on and then when one runs out, it will automatically switch over to the other one. I kind of like to run one closed, one open, so I know when I'm down to one tank. We're gonna have a 3,500 pound power tongue jack here that we see pretty much across the line for Airstream. It does have a light there in the front for helping to hook up at night. We have the Demco hitching system, super cool system. You actually leave this down as you're hooking up. It will pop up and then pop back down to lock around the, the uh, hitch ball which is really cool. And then there is a hole right there to be able to go across and lock this in place if you desire. Of course, you've got your chains right there. We've got our breakaway controller there. On this side, we're gonna find a low pressure, uh, quick disconnect for the propane. You could use that with a grill, uh, I guess the outside furnace, or not furnace, um, heater. And then on this side, we're gonna have the expanded little solar connection there. That used to be Zamp. It's now uh, Expand 360. So they are not using Zamp on that anymore. And then that little 
bar that's sticking out right here this pin that is for your spare tire that is stored underneath right there and that is a goodyear tire just like the sides the goodyear endurance tires and then we can see the underneath a little bit we've got a heavy duty jack right there and then two three more of those two on the back and one on the other side this is a completely enclosed aluminum underbelly and is heated as well so you are able to do fairly cold climates oh and then in the battery box area one of the new things we got for 24 is a new lid this lid is significantly more substantial than the older lid the older lid just felt like a piece of aluminum that you know flat aluminum that they put on here with a little you know twist lock so now we have this really nice feels like steel almost and that feels i mean it's heavy it also has this bend here on both sides to give this more sturdiness and for 2024 we now have a lock on the battery door which is huge um not having that before didn't make a ton of sense but it's nice to have that now it's the 001 key uh, so your batteries can be locked and i guess you could swap that out with a different key if you wanted to now with the international we do have the powered zip the awning i'm going to show that you know what i'll show that now i'm going to put it away real quick so you can see one how long it takes to go away but then i want to show you how well the new spring works so i kept the power on remember you always want to keep this power on while the awning is out that helps to it just helps the system know what's going on so it's first going to lower down into here into the arm and then once it gets down it'll start to pull back this is uh probably the easiest awning demonstration that I ever do because I don't actually have to do anything. So it's almost down all the way and then it'll start to go up. And you do have on the International this really nice umbrella fabric. Uh, it is a, it's kind of like the fabric that you see with uh, some of your beach chairs and pool chairs. So it can go away wet. You can put that away wet and it's okay. I still like to dry them out if you can. You know, if, if you're in a, um, you know, you're getting a little bit of rain and put it away. When you can, run it back out, let it dry, and then put it back up. Um, but if you have to put it away, it isn't going to hurt it. It's mold resistant. It's rot resistant. All that kind of good stuff. And then what can happen with the Zipti Power Awning is what we just saw. It thought it was all the way in. It is not all the way in. So what we're going to do is come over, hit out, open, and then we're going to stop it and hit close. And it should pull itself all the way in now. So a lot of folks aren't fans of this power zip thing only because it has so many quirks. And that is one of the quirks. Now I'm going to open it and I want to show you just how well this new spring design it used to have like a little piece of rubber. It was kind of, I don't know how to, it was like an O shape and it would squeeze. This new spring works so much better in actually letting this thing open. So I'm just going to come over and hit the open, open button. And then you'll start to see it go out but just look at how i mean how great that spring is with pushing that arm out now when it runs out it actually starts raising the awning as the awning is going out it's kind of different than when it pulls in when it pulls in it goes down first and then comes in now for you for those of you who have the older awning system with the old little rubber circle thing you can get this new spring from the uh, park store here at airstream in greensboro we can get this spring for you that motor is very loud um, and you can actually replace that replace your old little rubber o thing with this new spring works a lot better it's got it's got a good push on it as well now you can tilt this awning to the front or to the back so that way if you get a little bit of rain the rain will run off that side but it's really this is a sunshade it's not a rain shade it's not a storm shade it's a sunshade so a lot of the times you're tilting for the sun so right now the sun's behind me so i would really tilt tilt this to the back or to the rear so all i do all i did was hit this button here the rear and now it's going to lower this rear down and block more of the sun 
to give us more shade under the awning. Yep, so now we got a little bit more shade under the awning. So that's the powered Zipti awning. One of the things I do love that Airstream does, whatever size Airstream you choose, whether it's the 23, the 25, the 27, the 28, or the 30, they're gonna give you the longest possible awning that they can give you. So you will have from basically the front cap to the rear cap awning on whatever size you get. And I think that's awesome that Airstream does that because the awning really increases your space that you can utilize um, your camping space, right? So to put it away again, we're just gonna hit close. We don't have to tilt the back up or anything like that. It will do that on its own. And it's gonna lower, the, lower it and raise, bring it back. Let's see if it goes all the way back this time. <clears throat> nope, no, it's still going, okay. So that's the new spring for 2024 on the Zipti awning. Shut the door back. Now, in the front section here, I showed you that storage right there. Of course, we've got the awesome looking American themed international logo. We're gonna have a 110 power outlet right there. We've got our Girard tankless hot water heater right here. There is an off switch that's right there. If this switch is off, it's, it is off. Like that system will not work. So you have to come back outside and turn that on. There is a pressure relief valve right there. And we'll shut this. I always have to kind of push that around. And then kind of coming to the wheel section here, uh, we've got a different wheel for the international to the flying cloud and so forth. It is still a Goodyear tire. They're ST 225-75R15, so 15 inch wheel. Now this is gonna be connected to the Dexter, which I can't really show you on this side. That's gonna be one of your tanks right there. But Dexter axle, it's a torsion system. It is it uses a sp rubber spring to completely enclose. You do have a damper right there on the International, which you'll get on the Flying Cloud as well. Let me see if I can show you the, yeah, we can sit back here a little bit better. So then you can see the Dexter axle going all the way across there. Now there's no leaf springs on this particular axle. Because everything, <clears throat> excuse me, everything's in, inside of that tube it's a super cool system uh significantly more reliable so you're going to be independent independent wheels all the way around so all four independent and then you have the dexter axles on both you've got the dexter auto adjusting brakes as well uh, back there and of course we have 12 volt brakes on uh, everything airstream makes is going to have 12 volt brakes uh, and then your Goodyear Endurance tires that are actually are made in America. Then we've got our aluminum step here. As far as putting this step away, try to do this with one hand. We're going to fold this up and then let this sit right on top. Now this can be, a you can use this as a step. If you've got a low um, area here, and you don't need that second step. You can leave this just like it is. Now from putting it away here, you want to make it one motion. So I'm gonna grab right here and just come up, which it unlatches right there and then push right into place. And if I wanna open them, I can use my shoe right here, but I've used my shoe a few times before and cut, to cut the top of my shoes. So I just reach down now and it will come out just like that. You wanna let this go when you release that, let it go so it will lock back in place. If it doesn't lock, you can just pull it up there. And then again, to put it away, we're gonna pull up and then one smooth motion just like that and then let it come out now when you bring when you bring the step out we want to make sure we go ahead and start lifting the step up so that it folds down like that and it's a little bit easier to do that when you've got two hands versus one hand now we're off the back of the coach the, the airstream now the international is going to come standard with the window awnings we're going to have the window awning there and then we'll have another window awning here now these are great for providing shade on a hot sunny day you can see how that whole side of that 
of the coach right there is shaded with that awning out, that's gonna help keep that cold coach cooler on a hot summer day like today. And then we've got our LED lights all the way around. We've got our standard backup camera right there. And then we got, of course, more marker lights that are LED. Love the Airstream name right across. And then we've got our license plate holder, LED light there. We're gonna have our awning arms for getting the window awnings out. And then this arm right here, that is for your manual stabilizers, which this coach is equipped with. And we do have a little bit of storage right here in the back. We call this wet storage because, well, it will get wet, whatever you might put down there. Close that down, close that down, and then that's locked back in place. Of course, we have the rear bumper going across, and there is some skid plates right here, just in case you hit a kind of a deep departure angle, you're gonna be covered. And we got more the more port windows there. Now, right here, we're gonna have the outside shower, hot and cold water. We've got our city fill inlet. That does have the pressure regulator built in. We've got our black tank flush right here. Remember, you always wanna use this or you're gonna lose it because um, the way that sprays around there, it can, those things can get clogged. And then we have to go in and actually replace that spray nozzle out. So use this every time you use your black tank. We've got our furnace right there. You have your black tank, gray tank dumps right here. And we shouldn't have, where is it? Oh, that's all the way up here, okay. And we've got our sewer hose storage for your sewer hose right there. And that goes all the way across. If you're wanting more sewer ho hose storage, you can buy those suckers off of Amazon and add a second one on there, no problem. Then we've got, of course, the other side of the tires there. We've got our 30 amp smart plug right here. And below that is one of the new things for 2024 and that is that data port so before we had two coax tv inputs here i guess like satellite and then cable now we're going to have just one of those and then here is that data port which we can use for starlink like that we've got our potable water fill right there and then under the coach right here let's see come on there we go you can see that hose right there. That hose goes all the way up to the uh, air conditioner and there's a pump in there that will pump out the condensation water and pump it down to here. I love that about Airstreams. You don't want all of that water running down the side of your coach. And uh, okay, I'll show, <laughs> usually I always show the storage. I've already showed it once. So that is the outside of the International 23 FB twin bed model. Let me grab the ladder and we'll go up top. All right, so I'm on top, I've got a ladder out. We are gonna look at the top of the International 23 front bed and the new GE profile air conditioner. I did a whole separate video about that air conditioner. I'll link it above. Uh, got a little bit more detailed with it, but we can see one of our Max Air or Fanta Max Air fans right there one of your vent outs and then let me extend my camera up a little bit you have two of your three solar panels now those are marlin solar solar panels are 100 watts each which is going to give you a total of 300 watts and one of the biggest things i noticed about the ge profile is how much wider it is than a lot of the other units out there you can see those are really small but those are not the low profile there's kind of, there's a Dometic over there, I think. That might be a Coleman. That's a Coleman right there. You see it? I mean, it just looks so much smaller than the, uh, the profile right there, the GE profile. The one of the first things I noticed was just how big that logo is right there. It's so big. All right, let me go to the front and I'll show you kind of the front side there. Now this is the, coming from the front. We're at the front of the International. We're gonna have our other solar panel there that we couldn't see. There is room back there to add a fourth solar panel, maybe even a fifth solar panel, but I think at least a fourth we could add back there. It would be cool, it would be cool to see Airstream in the future maybe add an advanced solar package with uh, four solar panels instead of three. Maybe they do the lithium battery, the two lithium batteries plus a fourth solar panel or something along those lines. But that's where you could put that. Now that right there, that's gonna be your HD antenna, and then right behind that, or right in front of that, I should say, is your solar inputs. 
And I think right there, oh, flower, flower, okay. Right there in front of that, that's where your air connected system would connect to, I think. And then we have the front max air vent right there. Now with this particular floor plan, one of the things I do like about it is you've got two uh, air exhaust fans, one there, one at the front. I think that's really nice. If you're dry camping, you can have both of those running, have the windows open, and that's really gonna draw some good air inside the coach and then exhaust it straight out the top. These are, these are exhaust fans so that they're exhausting the heat upward as opposed to pulling heat down. Now this does have the white enamel coating. That's something the Airstream does to help reduce the solar energy that's gonna come off of the sun hitting that, that upper panel up here. So that's what that's there on. It's a baked on white enamel. And then one of the new improvements for 2024 is this new roof line. Before you had a transition right here, it would go, it would, you'd have the front cap would kind of come up and it would turn and go a little bit more straight. Then there was a transition that popped up. And from there, you would have a sill line, another sill line, and then you'd have the roof. We called it the Airstream bubble. Now, a few years ago, they got rid of that on the uh, Classic. The Classic got this front cap and the bubble went away, the little Airstream bubble went away. Uh, they've now added that to the International and the Flying Cloud line. That also means your inner ribs that support the inside of the coach here is a stamped rib as opposed to the hand welded um, and cut and assembled ribs that they were using probably for the, fa the last 90 years. Uh, it's now a stamped rib. Now what that's going to mean for you as a consumer, there's going to be more consistency as you go across this coach and look at each of those ribs because they're going to be like so much more close, uh, manufactured closer together. How would you say that? A, a greater tolerance um, in how they manufacture those. There's going to be less uh, differences between each rib. I, I just said a lot of stuff to try to say something simple, but um, there you go. So that is the front section of the 2024 International 23 front bed well, twin bed, but the top here is going to look the same whether it's the twin bed or not. I'm not sure what that right there is for. That, you know, I used to always see that with the uh, pro propane refrigerators, but this doesn't have the propane refrigerator, so I'm not really sure what that's for. But, uh, yeah, it's there, and it's silver. That looks cool. If you made it to this point of the video or you skipped forward, I just want to say thank you for watching. I really appreciate everyone who, who watches. Uh, everyone who you know likes the video, subscribes, everyone who leaves comments. I really do appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to jump down into the uh, the comments and leave your, your question there. I'll try to answer everything I see. Uh, or you can reach out. All of my contact information is below in the description. If you'd like to, feel free to come by Airstream at Greensboro. We'd be happy to help you, uh, show you around Airstreams, answer any questions that you might have. We also have one of the best parts departments outside of Airstream as far as Airstream goes around. So you could probably find a part here as well. Um, other than that, I hope you're having a great day. You live riveted and we'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye.